Good evening, everybody. My name is Steve Knutson with Fairfax County's Department of Transportation, and I want to welcome you to this meeting tonight to discuss the traffic calming plan for Pine Cross Road between Fox Mill Road and Viking Drive. And we can start with uh, introductions. And tonight from the Hunter Mill District Supervisor's Office, uh, we have Shmali Hoth joining us. And from FCDOT, we have Nicole Machakwe and Grace Vaughn. Um, if there are any of the uh, task force members on uh, tonight's meeting, they can introduce themselves um, during the Q&A session that will follow our presentation. And uh, Shamali, is there anything you would like to say before we start tonight's meeting? No, thank you so much for um, putting this together and thanks to the task force for all the work you've done uh, preliminarily. So I look forward to the discussion. All right, thank you. And Nicole has a short uh, presentation to run through, a few slides, and then after the uh, presentation, um, we'll go ahead and open the meeting up to any uh, comments or questions. So, Nicole, if you're ready, you can go ahead and start the presentation. Yeah, sir. Um, welcome in, everybody. As Steve said, um, we are here tonight to um, discuss the traffic calming pro program for um, Pinecrest Road. So uh, a couple notes that I would like to make. Um, uh, please note that this session is being recorded and may be used on social media. Um, please hold all questions to the end of the presentation and instructions on how to ask your questions will be provided at the end of the presentation. So um, just discuss why we're here. Um, today we are here to explain the traffic calming process, um, provide opportunity for feedback, and answer any questions that you all might have. Um, so diving in to what is traffic calming. Uh, traffic calming is the installation of physical devices to reduce vehicle speed. Um, these devices can be either vertical or horizontal. Um, the vertical devices are driven over, such as a speed hump, as you can see in the upper left-hand hand image while um, you drive around horizontal devices, um, such as a raised median island, um, shown in the upper right-hand image. Uh, both types of devices make the road safer for both drivers and pedestrians. Um, so I would like to also note that um, through this process, we are not permitted to install stop signs. Here we have charts um, and images showing the effects of decreased speed. As speed decreases, the visual acuity, field of vision, and depth perception increase. And as you can see, reducing speed can increase the safety for both pedestrians and drivers. Um, here we show um, a map showing the in-cell traffic calming projects throughout um, Fairfax County. There are over 266 projects, resulting in over um, 600 devices installed countywide. Each district has a device, so chances that you've driven over one are pretty high. Um, I would also like to note that um, FCDOT and the District Supervisor's Office collaborate with citizens on uh, all community-initiated projects. So all these projects are community-initiated. Okay, so the upcoming program can be broken into five steps. Uh, so step number one is project initiation. Step number two is plan development. Step number three is community engagement. And step number four is ballot phase. And the final step, which is um, step number five, project installation. Um, to start you guys off with step number one, um, as um, I said before, all uh, traffic calming projects are, projects are all, always um, community initiated. Uh, so the process begins with the request to that sent to the uh, community supervisor's office. Once that request is forwarded to FCDOT, we will then conduct a basic eligibility review, um, and then we will conduct a, um, a traffic study. If the subject road qualifies for the basic eligibility review and traffic study, the community then will form a task force. Uh, there are eligibility requirements that need to be met. 
Um, so uh, the road needs to be a VDOT maintained road, needs to have a 25 mile an hour speed limit, and it needs to be functionally classified as local collector or arterial. And if it's a collector or arterial, it needs to be a residential street. So there are also traffic study components that need to be met. Um, for the volume criteria, we need between 500 to 6,000 vehicles in 24 hours, both directions combined. Um, so for Pinecrest Road, we had 2,172. So we met the volume criteria. Uh, for the speed criteria, we need the 85th percentile speed um, needs to be greater than or equal to 35 miles per hour. Uh, so what this means is that 15% of vehicles need to be traveling 35 miles per hour or faster in at least one direction of travel. So the 85th percentile speed um, in the eastbound lane was 42, and in the westbound lane, it was 39. So Pinecrest road met the speed criteria as well. So moving on to plan two, um, which is the second step. First, we will conduct a site visit um, in the field in order to develop a draft plan. Once we have that draft plan, we will meet with the task force to get feedback and amend the plan if necessary. Once the task force is satisfied with the draft plan, the homeowners directly adjacent to any proposed measure will need to sign off uh, the placement of the device in order to move to, on to the next step. So here we have device placement requirements. Uh, based on these guidelines, we need a minimum of 300 feet between measures and existing stopping conditions. We need a minimum of 150 feet for, um, from any intersection. And we need a minimum of 150 feet for continuous sight distance with any device. And also, it needs to fit on the existing roadway, so we have to take into account of any um, uh, driveways, manholes, utilities, and we also have to count for the grade of the road. So based on those guidelines, um, we were in the site visit. Um, we were able to propose two speed humps on Pinecrest Road. As seen in the device map, the addresses in the blue boxes need to, needed to sign off um, the proposed devices um, since they are adjacent to their homes. Okay, so here we have a speed hump schematic. Um, the speed hump is 12 feet long and three inches high at center. There will be white chevrons in each travel lane and a speed hump signs with a recommended speed of 15 miles per hour on each side of the device, as you can see in the image. So um, step three is community meeting, which we are here today. Um, this is where we present the plan for the community to obtain feedback. Based on that feedback, the task force will decide whether they want to amend the plan and or proceed to the next phase. If the task force um, decides to move forward, we can move forward to the next phase, phase, which is ballot phase. So step number four, ballot phase. Each household in the ballot area will receive one vote. Um, uh, the vote will need to be sent directly to the supervisor's office. Uh, the ballot time period will be open for a minimum of three weeks and the ballot must be received by the date marked on the ballot. The supervisor's office will tally the votes and notify the task force of the results. Here we have an example of the ballot. Um, the proposed devices will be listed on the ballot and the community will be voting on the entirety of the plan. Um, the task force is responsible for distributing the valid packages to everyone in the ballot area. So there are, um, sorry, uh, there are three ways to return your ballot by the deadline. One way um, is to mail in your ballot uh, directly to the supervisor's office. Second, you can hand deliver it directly to the supervisor's office. Or thirdly, you can um, go ahead and email it to the supervisor's office. Ballots should not be returned to the task force. 
Okay, so we here we have the uh, ballot area map for Pinecrest Road. We have 80 ballots. In order for the proposed plan to move forward, we need greater than 50% of all households to vote in favor of the plan. Uh, so in this case, we would need 41 yes votes in order for the plan to move forward. So if we get the right number of yes votes, we can move on to step number five, project installation, the final step. Um, this is where the um, traffic calming plan will be presented to Fairfax County Board of Supervisors for endorsement, and the resolution will be sent to VDOT. Once endorsed and the resolution accepted by VDOT, um, Fairfax County Department, um, sorry, Transportation or FCDOT, um, will work with the Department of Public Works and Environmental Services to schedule installation. And finally, the last step is the traffic calming plan will be installed. So uh, here we are at the end of the presentation. Um, we're going to move on to the questions and answer session. You have two options, uh, chat or speak. Once the chat item is activated on Teams, you can use, that, um, use it by typing in your question. And if you want to speak, please click the raise your hand icon, which is up at the top of the screen, as you can see in the image. Um, so then you can have a request sent to you when it is your turn to be unmuted. So once that um, goes to you, you will just have to click the allow button to be unmuted. And if you are um, calling in by phone, please push star five to raise your hand. When it is your turn, the host will call on you and ask. Um, you can ask your question. You will need to push star six to be unmuted. And when you are done, um, please push star five to unraise your hand. Okay. Thank you, Nicole. Um, I'm seeing the first hand from Brenda Slater. I'm gonna send you a request to unmute your mic. Hi, this is Brenda Slater. I live on the other section of Pinecrest between Viking and Farthingale. Um, is this going to apply to that section of Pinecrest? And if not, how can we get it applied to that section of Pinecrest? So um, we were just asked um, through this process to look at this section of Pinecrest. The um, community, the association can put forward another request to look at um, Pinecrest from uh, Viking Drive going out across uh, Fairfax County Parkway, if um, that's what you would like. So you would just need to submit that request into the supervisor's office. We would then have to restart the process or start the process for that segment of uh, Pinecrest Road. Okay, so that that has to be submitted by the HOA? Yes, it should be. Okay, because I think the section of Pinecrest between Viking and Fox Mill is a different HOA than my HOA. Oh, okay, that I did not know. Yeah, so yeah. if that, that association is still active, then they should make that request. If there's not an active, if that association is inactive, then you can put together a petition to make that request. Well, we're we're still paying association fees, so they okay. better be active. Okay, then that should answer that question. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, the next hand I was seeing was from Mark. Mark, I'm gonna send you a request to unmute your mic. Yeah, my question uh, relates to who is going to prepare the ballot. Is that something that the county prepares or do we take that template and gin up the ballots ourselves? So yes, we would send the template to the task force. They would um, make the modifications to reflect this particular project, um, add whatever additional language they wanted for the cover letter and then send it back to Fairfax County for our review. And then once we reviewed it, then the task force would need to produce the copies and mail them out or hand deliver them. 
Okay, thank you. Okay, and that does include a couple of pieces of paper. <clears throat> so that would be a cover letter explaining what's um, in the ballot and what's being asked of the person receiving the ballot. The ballot itself, as shown um, in this presentation earlier, the template we showed. Uh, a device map showing the uh, device locations and then also the schematic for the uh, speed hump being proposed at the two different locations. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, the next question I was seeing in chat from Kimberly, what is the time frame? And she also asked if there is an evaluation phase post implement implementation. So generally after the devices are installed, we'll wait about six months and then um, go out and recollect data to see if we can uh, determine the effects of the uh, devices being installed. Um, for a timeline, um, it kind of depends on you know how quickly the task force wants to move forward. Uh, <clears throat> generally, we leave the ballot process open for um, about three weeks. Um, from this point forward, uh, we would probably be looking at a, a springtime installation um, next year if everything is successful. Thank you. Uh, the next question I saw with a hand raised is from Joe and Annie. I'll send you guys a request to unmute. Hi, this is Joe. You actually answered the question with your last uh, statement there. So tracking a springtime installation if we get on our uh, speed demon wheels here and get those ballots out as quickly as possible. So uh, I think as far as the rest of the task force, I think this does meet the intent uh, and addresses all the concerns that we had. So again, thank you for uh, your support in this as well. That's all I got. All right, thank you, Joe. And like we said earlier, um, the task force will uh, be responsible to uh, produce the ballots and distribute them the person receiving the ballot should send those back to the supervisor's office. And I think we have a question there. And we'll stop the explanation there. Kimberly, I'll send you a request to unmute. Oh, there we go. How long have we been holding meetings on Zoom or Teams? It's still complicated to figure out how to unmute. Apologies for the delay. Um, it, I don't mean to detract from the discussion that's unfolding. It feels like it, there's a strong public will in favor, um, and I appreciate the task force work on this. Uh, I just wanted to ask about how it intersects with the intersection that precedes it in the drawing, which is the Fox Mill Pinecrest Road development. Um, if we have um, task force members, we also have um, Shamali with us. Could you comment, please, on when we'll see a walkway across Box Mill Road for the sake of pedestrian safety in this immediate area? So Thanks. you're talking about a striped crosswalk going across Box Mill Road? Uh, yes, there's supposed to be a walkway there. There's supposed to be a, uh, there's long been uh, a sidewalk in development. We now have a temporary light at that intersection, but we're awaiting a crosswalk. And it's all part of the same uh, effort to calm traffic in the area and protect, protect pedestrians. Um, um, I can just, I can, oh, yeah, I can speak to that. This is Shumley. I, I can speak to that just a little bit. There, there is a long-term project for the sidewalk, and as you said, to it's it's going to change the way the turn lanes are just a little bit, add a pedestrian crosswalk in that's signalized. Um, that is still in process. We have a portion of the funding that has been allotted. Um, I. I don't have an exact date for you as to when that will be in or what's the projected date. Um, so I can check back and get, get that information to the task force um, for that piece of it. All right, thanks, Shamali. OK, 
Okay, another question in chat um, from Joe and Annie. Just to clarify, the task force meeting was to address the two designated speed humps for all the other buckets of updates and get the ballots out for votes. Okay, yes, I mean, that was the intent of the meeting tonight was to um, present and discuss the two devices that uh, are proposed for this section of Pinecrest Road. And if we can follow up later on, we will try to get that information out regarding the uh, intersection improvement there at Pinecrest and Fox Mill. Okay, I see a hand from Mark. Mark, I'll send you another request to unmute your mic. Sorry, did you hear me? Oh, we can, yes. Okay, so we will just, the task force itself will decide when the balloting period begins and ends. After we get the ballot put together and approved by the county, then we'll set the opening and closing date. Yes, so we need that opening or we need that closing date, not necessarily the opening date, but the the date that the ballot process ends that needs to be um, in the cover letter and on the ballot itself. Okay. So the people receiving the ballot know when they have to return it by. And so the supervisor's office knows when they need to stop receiving ballots and compile the results. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, another question from chat from Alex. Um, asking, so the task force is to distribute the ballots which the county will draft based on the task force input. Right, we'll send the templates to the task force and, you know, basically it will be a few minor e um, edits that you might need to make. Uh, you can basically leave most things um, the way that you receive them and the template if you choose to, if you want to add any additional language to the cover letter. You can do that, but we would want to review that additional language before it goes out. So just to feedback off of what you're saying, Steve. Um, so what we'll do is we'll have a cover letter and we'll send the cover letter first for you guys to edit um, and work with and then um, send back to FCDOT um, for verification. Once we verify that, then we'll send you the rest of the balloting material, as such as Steve said. Um, we'll be sending the map schematic um, and we'll also provide the address list for the task force um, based on the ballot area. Thank you guys. Um, another question from chat from Kathy. When will we receive the ballots to distribute? Um, we can probably turn those around fairly quickly. Uh, generally, the um, task force um, can you know reconvene and make the determination that they want to move forward. Um, and if that's the case, then we can try to get them out here shortly. The templates to you shortly. We will also need verification on whether um, the task force and the district supervisor's office uh, wants to decide whether the ballots go to the homeowners or the occupants. So we'll need to know that information as well. Another question from Joe and Annie. In the highlighted area, the Pinecrest pool is a voting member of the 80 ballots, correct? Yes, they are.
Another uh, question, this one from Sam. If people do not vote or return a ballot, does that count as a no or a yes? <coughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> so we are looking for a percent of the issued ballots coming back in favor. So a no vote or a, a non-return vote doesn't count towards the positive. So in a way it does count as a no vote. So we need, since we're issuing 80 ballots for this process, we need greater than 50% to come back with a yes. So that would be a minimum of 41 yes votes that we need. <clears throat> Um, one more question or another question. The task force decides if we have occupants vote versus owners for rental homes. Um, that, that's correct. So the task force should um, discuss with uh, Shamali, you know, what would um, best represent, um, you know, kind of the, the feel of the community. And uh, so we leave that kind of up to the community task force in the supervisor's office. So you would just need to, you know, reach out to the Hunter Mill office and, you know, kind of indicate your uh, preference as far as that is concerned. So either the occupant and it would be all the occupants of the um, parcels identified in this ballot, ballot area or all of the property owners identified in this ballot area. So after the meeting, that would be the first thing that you would need to make a determination on, or the second if you want to move forward. And then if you want um, the occupant to receive the ballot or the property owner. And I think Shamali, correct me if I'm wrong. I think the Hunter Mill office is pretty much open to, um, you know, either the occupant or the property owner, just dependent on the community? Yes, that is correct. Advisor Alcorn is, is um, equally open to that. So if the task force has a recommendation or a request, we'll, um, he will tend to honor that. I will you know, pass it by him to make sure. Yeah, thanks. And we do have a um, a contact page at the end of the presentation. Um, so if people do uh, have questions after the meeting is over. They can reach out to um, Fairfax County DOT by email. Um, they can email their questions to DOT info at fairfaxcounty.gov and just put Pine Cross Road traffic calming in the subject line and that would come to uh, the staff here or you can call 703-877-5600 and ask to talk to somebody about the Pine Crest Road traffic calming process. Um, the same contact information is available for the Hunter Mill District Supervisor's Office, so it would just be huntermill at fairfaxcounty.gov. Same information in the subject line, or you can call their office at 703 703-478-0283 and um, you should be able to talk to somebody there, if not Shamali, about this project. And, and I will let, I would like to let the task force know um, that I will be in the office through this week. Next week, I am on holiday, but I don't want your process to be held up. Paul Davis in our office will be uh, taking care of any of my uh, active projects while I'm out and he has handled transportation for some time, so it's very familiar uh, with the process. Thank you, Shamali. 
We did have one more question in chat from Mark. If we go with the occupant, the ballot would be addressed to occupant. Would I guess would the ballot be addressed to occupant? Um, it can be. I'm not sure that we necessarily always include um, who is uh, the mailing is going to. Um, so, I mean, you can just address it to occupant or you can just send it to the address. I know some task forces do um, put if they're mailing it out, they have chosen to use uh, resident of and then just use the address. Um, since that's um, generally, since we don't know if it is a renter, generally that's hard to get the information of the name and if it changes frequently. So it's probably best to use just resident of and the address provided. Okay, thank you. Um, Alex asks, so the task force will be notified when ballots go out, right? No, the task force will be sending the ballots out. So you will know when they're going out. Yes, so the task force will be um, delivering them however you guys choose. So like we said before, either by mail or you can hand deliver them. And just a, a gentle reminder, if you are hand delivering them, please don't put them in people's mailboxes. Is a no no. Also, it's best to try to deliver them all around the same time period and time frame, um, just so it can be consistent of when people can vote. Okay, if we don't have any more questions, we will try to be as responsive and as quick as we can um, once the determination is made to go forward. If we do make that determination and get those templates out to you for those uh, ballot pieces. So um, we will be looking for an email from either Shamali or Paul, and uh, we will get those back to the task force as quickly as we can. So I guess if there are no more questions, then um, we'll go ahead. Oh, one more. We Mark do have. Uh, there was one more question in chat as well. Um, Alex asking if the task force is to provide mail in envelopes and stamps. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. And I'll I'll send a request to Mark to unmute. So and Alex, um, oh sorry, Mark, go ahead. So you said that um, it can if we go talk to a person and they agree to sign it um we can't collect it from them that is correct so we can't be standing on their their door stoop kind of um encouraging them to participate while you know we're issuing and collecting the ballots so it's going to be by their determination um that they want to do that so we want to give them that opportunity without any pressure. So um, yes, the modes of returning are, as Nicole said earlier, uh, they can be mailed back to the supervisor's office. They can be hand delivered to the supervisor's office, or they can be sent in electronically to the supervisor's office, either by email or scan. Great, thank you. Thank you. And the ballots are um, kind of a trifold. Um, so the um, task force um, or whoever is receiving the ballot, they can fold that and then it will be pre-addressed as we shown in the example um, so that that person can um, mail it, email it or hand deliver it back to the uh, supervisor's office.
Uh, sorry, Mark, I took your mic away. Let me give it back. So what if we need more than three weeks? You can ask for more than three weeks. So if you, you know, figure that you're going to send them out on the first of the month, um, you can, you know, ask, you can choose to have four weeks or five weeks and just date the information accordingly. Okay. But we do need to state it on the ballot in the cover letter um, when the ballot process comes to an end. So the supervisor's office knows when to start counting the ballots and also so the people that are receiving the ballots know when they need to return them. So if you want more time, you can certainly ask or just, you know, say that we want four or five weeks and we can leave it open for that time. Okay. We just need to know ahead of time. Okay. So it's yes. the task task force decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, also, keep in mind that once the ballots are already distributed, we cannot change that date. Um, so that date needs to definitely be determined um, before the ballots go out. Okay, uh, Mark, you still have your hand up. I'm assuming that um, you oh, just yeah. you hadn't put it down yet. Um, that's fine. Um, but if we do not have any more questions, I mean, we can keep it open for a few more minutes. Um, yeah, like... we have one person writing in the chat. Okay. All right, I think that we are done, Nicole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> looks like it. Okay. <laughs> All right, um, like we said, if you do have any more questions following up, and it looks like Alex is um, putting something into the chat. Um, if you do have questions, just please feel free to reach out to the Hunter Mill office or Fairfax County DOT. We will wait just one more second. Um, so, um, you are most welcome, Alex, and um, good night, everybody, and have a pleasant evening. Thank you for attending.